So, good evening, folks. It is uh, it's three minutes past nine already uh, on this ridiculously hot Monday evening. Shout out to those people who are watching us here live. Massive shout out to everyone who catches up on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, who listens to the audio experience um, on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, uh, wherever you are watching or listening. Thank you so much for uh, being here. And if you didn't know the Acts on This TV audio experience existed uh, on iTunes or Spotify or Stitcher, uh, you can get the audio of all of these Monday night live broadcast i do it every monday night nine till ten o'clock at act on this dot t- no not act on this dot tv facebook.com forward slash act on this tv um every monday nine till ten so if you can't make it live you can still get access to either the video recording on on youtube on the acts on this tv youtube channel just search for acts on this tv um or equally you can just listen to the audio if you're uh, out and about doing stuff who listens to like just more podcasts than anything else i just seem to have gone audio only on practically everything that, um, that I consume at the moment. I don't really have time to watch a lot of video unless it's in the evening like this, um, but I'm never through the day without like a pair of headphones in. Um, so Chris, good evening. Chris said, what do you say a second ago, Chris, about a pilot for the BBC? Um, sounds very, uh, very exciting. So uh, let us know uh, how that's going. There's been a lot more TV opened up today as well. It's Monday, start of a brand new week. I noticed Doctors was back filming today. All the serial dramas guys are like back on it. Um, I don't know if if there's any of them that aren't now. I mean, it's all obviously filmed very, very differently. Um, But, you know, if you're sat there thinking, oh, I can't do anything still because, well, you're letting yourself off by giving yourself the excuse that nothing's going on. There's a shed load going on. So, um, yeah, no more letting people off. Start getting uh, getting stuff done. And that's what we did on Saturday. I did a training for any actor who is looking for their first role on TV. Actually, not just your first. If you're looking for really kind of like, I'd say... I don't know, first five. Maybe you've got three credits under your belt, four credits under your belt, but you're looking for your next job. Um, I walked people through for an hour a really simple to implement process that I have used over 25 times to land more than 25 roles on TV. Um, literally a three-step process. Um, go to, you can see on the on the URL on the bottom of the screen now, if you go to actonthis.tv forward slash replay, you can watch that training. I'm probably only going to keep it up till midnight tomorrow. Um, I make an offer in that training at the end for people who want to go deeper as well and actually you know, really want to commit to getting their first TV role if they've not got it yet. There's a lot of people in this community I know who are ridiculously talented, like disgustingly so, and they've still not got a TV credit after being in the industry four years. I'm like, wow, like there's just some things you're clearly doing wrong that like you could fix very very easily and that's what we go over and it's not a bullshit theory it's not um you know sort of like something that i've come up with it's actually how i have booked all of my tv roles time and time again and i just presumed everyone was doing this until i had a chat with people a few weeks ago and the guy i was talking to was like my god why have you never put this out as a training and I was like, because it's obvious, isn't it? And he's like, no, nope, I don't know anyone who's doing this. So uh, actonthis.tv forward slash replay if you want to go in there, if you want to go and watch that. But it's probably only going to be up till tomorrow evening, um, which is Tuesday, the, what date will it be? The 11th, um, if you're listening or watching on the replay. So let us know how you're doing. Um, all those people who are here live, a little shout out to you again. We've got Wendy's here, um, Polly's in the house. Um, Chris says, oh, it's just got a small amount of funding for the pilot, potentially for the BBC. Um, but, you, but what? But nothing will come of it. Is that, is that, are, you, are you predicting negativity there, Chris? Or are you just, you know, or has nothing come of it? Um, because, because everything could come of it. We've got, to, we've got to make positivity louder, man. Bobby's in the house from Ireland. Uh, Ricky's here. Rachel's here. Connor's here. Um, he says, yeah, there you go. Even Connor's backing me up. Connor says, when are you going to start being optimistic? Yeah, man, honestly, you have to. If you believe, I'm telling you, Chris, mate, and this goes for everyone, if you believe nothing will come of anything, nothing will come of anything. Like, seriously, it all starts. It could not be more fundamental. It all starts with um, belief. Like, swear to God, belief in your potential to make something happen. It means you take massive action because you've taken massive action. And if you can take massive specific action, you will get results. And when you get results, it feeds back into your belief system. Go, see, see, Chris, I told you you could do it. And then, boom, you believe you've got even more potential next time. But you have to take responsibility for your career and its outcome, okay, of, of, of whatever it is that you're going for right now. People say, I think it's really interesting, actually. You know that, that saying that you'll hear that's kind of probably oversaid where it says, you know, was it Spider-Man? Did it come from where it says, with great, um, with great power comes great responsibility, I think it freaking works the other way around as well. With great responsibility comes great power. 
And when you start taking responsibility for your career, your projects, and where you are at in your life, whether that is in your career, in your relationship, how much money you are earning, your happiness, whatever it is, when you take responsibility, and that's, you know, responsibility, being able to respond, that's what it means. It doesn't mean you are reacting to everything, you're getting angry about your situation. Response able. You are able to respond to your situation. You know, with great responsibility, I truly believe I've experienced it in my own life, becomes great power. Not just the other way around. With great power comes great responsibility. So take responsibility for that project, man. And everyone on here starts taking more responsibility for everything in your life. Um, and you will become more powerful, like 100%, because you're not giving your power away to external forces then it's like i'm in control you know when i'm not working it's my fault not in a negative way just in the fact that if it's my fault i can do something about it i'm not waiting for other people to uh you know to do something about it so um so yeah get on it but good luck with uh good luck with that project and he says it'll be positive if, it, if it's picked up it's never going to be picked up until until you are positive honestly you know look at anyone who's successful and you're like, oh, it's all right for you now. You're optimistic and you're this and you're that and the other. Look at what they were like before they had it. And I promise you, they would have been exactly the same. And that's why they've become successful because they were like they are now before they had it. So um, you will not become positive if it's picked up. You'll become positive now. And because you are positive, it will be picked up. So um, it's, honestly, man, it's freaking powerful. It's not just airy-fairy positive thinking bullshit. It's about actually kind of, you know, expecting good things to happen in your life. And when you do good things will happen. When you expect bad things, you will just, you're like a shit magnet. <laughs> that's literally, that's how I would describe it. You've got two choices in the morning. You can wake up in the morning and decide that, you know, you're going to be a magnet for good things or you can decide you're going to be a shit magnet and then you're going to have a load of shit thrown at you. Uh, Leroy, good evening. Brendan, hope you're good. He says, I've had responses from seven. See what I mean? Seven casting directors today. Also have three self tapes for day player roles today. Mate, this is, in, this is what I was talking about on the training on Saturday. I bet you, be honest, I bet you took action because of what you saw on that training on Saturday and now you've had seven opportunities, you know, for castings from, direct, from, from casting directors. Seriously, guys, go and watch that before it comes down tomorrow. That's on this.tv forward slash replay. It could change your career very, very quickly. And Kane says he's going to keep following his dreams. Got to do it, man. Got to do it. So tonight we're going to be talking about, I want to recap a little bit on uh, the member-only webinar that we did last week with agent Nicola Bolton uh, from Nicola Bolton Management. She's the, the senior agent and CEO and owner of Nicola, Bol uh, Nicola? Nicola Bolton Management. Um, and we also had um, a special guest. We had Bryony Polizzi, who is Nicola's associate agent. Uh, we had an incredible live webinar for nearly, well, it was over two hours, I think, uh, with Bryony and Nicola talking about Nicola Bolton Management, talking about what they're looking for from their actors, how you can sign with them, when you can sign with them, what they're looking for when they're ready to take more people on. Um, Nicola's been in the industry a long, long time. Used to head up um, a arm of Regan Talent Group, um, the Manchester branch of Regan Talent Group. Now she's set up on her own. Um, has created her own client list. Has got clients working in lots of great TV um, and will be, by the end of this year, looking for more actors. So um, I'll play a little mashup of what you missed. If you've not been taking part in these, if you get a membership to Acts on this.tv, we do this every single week with a top casting director, a top agent, actor, writer, producer. Ultimately, we have a little closed group mastermind session where members can jump on Zoom. We all have a, uh, have a live call there, do lots and lots of Q&A, lots of one-to-one -one coaching with people within the community. Um, and it works a little bit like this. I'm going to jump straight in and introduce you to tonight's special guests. We've got two. It's Double Trouble, owner <laughs> and CEO of Nicola Bolton Management. It's super agent Nicola Bolton and associate agent Bryony Pulitzi. Yay! Good evening. Do you focus more or do you want to focus more now on an area like film and TV or are you going to be balanced with theatre? You know, what, what, what's your taste really in actors? My taste in actors, um, I just like really, we like it when we can meet them, don't we, Brian? And we can have a chat yeah. with them and get to know their personalities. And it's just something like different and unique and something that we've not seen before. What advice do you have for actors on here now who are wanting to reach out to agents but are like petrified of quote unquote getting it wrong? You know everyone in this industry is human. Nobody is against you at all so I just think you know just send a nice friendly email. What can I do as an actor to try and find jobs rather than just leave it up to my agent because obviously 
you've only got a small amount of time that you can spend on each person that you've got on your books. I wouldn't look at it as, um, you know, your agent only has a certain amount of time to spend on you because, you know, if an agent's taking you on, you know, I'm, I mean, I don't know who the agent is or anything, but I'm speaking from how we would take someone on. We, we don't take people on lightly. What do actors do when they know they're being put forward for jobs by their agents? that they are not getting um, the job. I would say that um, you sit down with your agent and you go, right, you yeah. try and troubleshoot. You go, what do we need to do to get in that room? How do you know when is a good time to look to change an agent? Like, is it just an honest conversation that you have with yourself? Is it kind of a feeling you have? Everyone is on your side. If a casting director pulls you into an audition room, you know, they've got a, a relationship with the director to protect and they, they think that you can do the job. Don't worry too much about everybody else is doing. Just, you know, practice your craft, get your stuff together, get your, get your ducks in a row, as you'd say, and just concentrate on what you want to do and where you want to be. Boom! Um, as Nicholas said there, yeah, concentrate on uh, what it is that you want and where you want to be. If you want to listen to the full two-hour replay or watch it, you know, watch or listen, you get access to both the audio-only version or the video and audio version as well. Um, go to actsonlist.tv, grab your membership, and you can also then join us on this Thursday night's call that I will be showing you in a little while with a BAFTA nominated actress who is going to blow you away because she's just awesome. Um, so yeah, what did, for the, those people who were on here, what did you think? What were your takeaways from that chat with Nicola? Those people particularly who are maybe looking for a new agent, haven't got an agent yet, um, you know, or uh, are too afraid. Like I said there, you know, a lot of people are just so afraid to actually reach out to people because like this is the thing that is stopping. Again, I'm seeing so many actors sort of like falling foul of is like they're just so petrified of other people's opinions it's really really screwing them over to the point where they're like they just don't take any action because that protects them from having any judgment um and then they just defeat the entire like point of being in this industry you know they want supposedly loads of eyes on them and everyone to watch them performing in the biggest tv shows on the planet yet they're shit scared of the the judgment of one person you know an agent who can help put them where they want to be um, it makes no sense whatsoever that people are like yeah i want to be the center of attention i want to be on the telly or i want to be on a stage um or, but actually i don't want to like reach out to anybody because i'm afraid and that's because people don't feel that they are business people within this industry you might not feel as a creative that you are a business but this is something we did on the training on saturday as well was just looking at every single person in this industry is their own business um, and so many actors don't know what it is that they are selling in their own business. They don't know what their product is that they're offering. They're trying to create a showreel that shows every single possible thing they could be. And it ends up showing them doing nothing at all. Nothing of any strength or relevance anyway. So um, you've got to start looking at yourself, yeah, as a business. But those people who were on that webinar, what were... Uh, what were your takeaways? Um, and uh, oh, Nikki says you watched the Peter Hunt and Davy Crowley um, live today as well that we did. That was an, an awesome one. That was another one and inspired me to send out four emails. Boom! There's some uh, there's some action definitely. Um, without a doubt, it's all about taking action without a doubt. When I look at who's are on agents lists, I see lots of young people. Where do the over fifties go? Uh, Helen, I tell you where they go. They, they allow themselves to fall into the background. It's not the industry. They give up. This is it, honestly. When I get casting directors on actsonlist.tv, Martin Gibbons was saying this. The pool shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and shrinks because they don't stay the course. It's not because the industry is biased or because they don't need over 50s men and women to be in shows because, of course, they do. They're everywhere. Um, but it's because people just can't stay the course. So it's nothing. Don't don't get it twisted and think that it's the industry against you. It's not. It's most people in the age bracket just go forget it. Can't be asked. Can't be bothered anymore. Um, that Martin, but they, um, Martin Gibbons got Wendy Walker. Um, Wendy, you don't have to put your age on, but you would be in that kind of category. Um, I know you're watching tonight. Uh, what did Martin Gibbons say to you when you got on and you said basically, right, what happens with people in my age group? And he, and he said, oh my God, yes, Wendy, I will be seeing you. 
because he says the pool just shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. And that's what's kind of really cool about this industry is like the, the, it's almost survival of who can just hold on the longest, who can hold their breath for the longest, Helen. And if you can hold your breath for longer than other people within your category, because it's the same for everyone. You know, you could say, oh, the agents have loads of young people. That's a really negative thing as well for the young people in terms of if you're a, you know, a sort of five foot, like I was in my, in my mid twenties, five foot 10, average height, you know, brown air, white male, average, 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 <laughs> right? Hopefully I didn't have average ability, but I was definitely average physically, you know, in terms of in my age group. When there's 7,000 of us in Manchester all going for the same casting, it's a lot harder than when there's three over 50s females or something like that. So use it to your advantage. We've all got to start reframing the way we're looking at the world in this industry and look at our USP. You know, what is it that makes you, you, your unique selling point? And if that is because you're the only one in that age group and that category who's actually like going after it and who is hungry, I'm hungrier at 37 than I was, massively more hungry at 37 than I was at 27. You know, so if you're in your 50s, I'm sure you're hungrier now, or I would hope you are, than you were in your 40s because maybe you weren't actually going after what you wanted in life in your 40s and now you've given yourself permission to chase this dream and you've got 50 years on the planet left. You could live your life again. Uh, and those people in their 20s, God, you, you've got it made. You're going to live your life four times again. Stop thinking time is running out and it's over when you're 30. It's bullshit. Um, so yeah, it's not, it's not the industry doesn't let people in when they're older, Helen. It's lots of people who are older don't go into the industry, you know, or or are, you know, just just sort of like jaded and bitter, I think. <laughs> I've felt it at times in my thirties. But um but yeah, gotta just, you know, be the one, be the light, be the energy, um, and be the one who is showing their hunger um and their willingness to learn even at that age and become better, you know. No one knows it all, regardless of, of what age we're at and what we've done. Wendy says she's sixty two. Um that's it, Wendy. But again, you know, 40 years on the clock. You've got longer to live, Wendy, if you play your cards right and look after yourself than I have lived my entire life. I could go back to day zero of when Ross was born and live my entire life again. Um, and that's what you've got to live effectively. So let's uh, make the rest of your life the best of your life. Um, definitely. Um, and uh, Bobby says, Wendy is clearly 37. <laughs> you definitely are, Wendy. Wendy's dress sense, Wendy's energy, Wendy's demeanor is absolutely 37, without a doubt. She's she's mad as a bag of frogs. She's an incredible um, like uh, cake baker. Um, she's amazing. So um, yeah, definitely... Um, Definitely stay young at heart, Wendy. Um, Jill says she's hanging in there. Julie says I'm over 50 but came back. Uh, glutton for punishment, she says. Honestly, age is just... Age is, is a complete man-made kind of construct when you look at it. If if we took age away and we just went... You know, we just didn't even have it as a thing and you just looked at people around you and it was all basically you had to guess, you know, how old people were or how long they'd been around. Um, I think we'd all find it much harder if we hadn't put a label on it. Uh, you know, definitely. Brendan says I'll be 60 in four weeks. And Brendan, you've never looked better, mate. You know, with respect, you won't mind me saying you look so much better now, healthier, slimmer, more zest for life than you did two years ago, mate. You know, you look younger, massively younger. You've aged two years, but you've everything about you has become younger. Um, it's it's just a number, isn't it? It's as cliched as that is. Uh, and Jillian says, I celebrate my age. I have more hustle in me now than there was there 15 years ago. No, it is honestly, we've got to remember as well that getting older is a privilege. It's a privilege that lots of people lost today. People who woke up yesterday, there's roughly 151,000 of those didn't wake up today across the world. That's roughly the death toll in peacetime as well. When there's no wars going on, when there's no COVID, when there's no, you know, uh, these, oh God, that disaster in Beirut. Um, you know, 151,000 people lost what you now have today and you've got that and you might not be appreciating that. And if someone was to take it off tomorrow, off you tomorrow, you would kick yourself in the afterlife um, that you had allowed the opinion of a casting director 
or the opinion of a director or another actor or some random person on Twitter who might have said, you know, who probably wouldn't have said it, but you were imagining they were going to say your showreel scene wasn't any good or that thing you shot was crap um, and you didn't put it out, you didn't show it to the world, you kept it to yourself and it died with you. That would piss me off massively. The one thing that I am afraid of more than anything in my life is regret because it's poison. I can't imagine what it must be like. It must be awful to get to 92, look back on your life and go, oh my God, I played it so safe. I never did anything to actually go off after what I wanted. And what was the worst that was going to happen? Someone's going to say, no, sorry, uh, Brendan, you can't have an audition this week. I mean, that's it. What are you afraid of? Uh, I don't mean you in particular, Brendan. I just mean like people in general. Um, Esther says, write an email to send out next week when I've got my new headshots. Awesome. Taking what I've learned from Saturday as what to put in. Yeah, and we're going to go over massively on... Um, so basically, guys, what I'm doing is... Um, I'm not going to talk about it really tonight because you can go and check it out in the replay. Um, but I'm doing a one-day event um, for, again, for any actors who are looking for those first few TV roles, particularly if you've not got any yet. Um, you know, but you have everything that you think you need. You've got, you know, you've got spotlight, you've been training, you think you're a good actor, you've got headshots, et cetera, et cetera, but you're not getting in the room. Some really basic things we can do to really speed that process up. And it's stuff that I've done myself, like I say, to literally land job after job after job. And I went over how I got my first 12 TV jobs, 12 to 15 TV jobs. Uh, speaking roles, these are not like background things when you're first starting off in the industry. These are fully cast speaking roles, either a scene or multiple scenes or a couple of episodes of shows, um, you know, with big names as well. Um, and I'm doing on the 5th of September something called First TV Roll Fast Track Live, where I'm going to be taking people who want to go really deep on this subject and have me kind of help them in a group coaching session. So it's an all day event, 10 a.m. till 6 p.m., um, where I'm going to take you through five modules of a program that I'm developing. Um, and ultimately, by the end of it, you're just going to be able to... I was going to put it together in like a six-week course. I thought, no, because people are going to like drop out in the middle. They're not going to take action. If I can just keep you guys focused for one day, that's it, just eight hours and hammer these things home. Like Brendan's done today with his seven emails, you know, you could potentially, you know, very quickly start making some massive dents in the in the acting industry, you know, with your talent, with your, uh, you know, career. Um, and that's going to be, yeah, the 5th of September. Um, full details can be found at actonlist.tv forward slash first role. Um, but again, registration for that is going to come down soon because uh, I don't want the group to get too big. Um, you know, and I, uh, I just, I just want, yeah, I just want people to take action, like literally from the training on Saturday for a few days, we'll get as many people in as we possibly can, because I want to help as many people as possible. Um, and to be, to be brutally honest and on a selfish note, I want as many case studies as possible because the more successful I can make you guys, when I do launch this as a program, I want you lot on camera going, yeah, I hadn't had my first TV role. Then I did Ross's course, bang. Um, so it's within my interest. It's a crusade of mine <laughs> to freaking push you. And I will push you though. I'm not going to accept any excuses. It's like, you know, we're going to have a Facebook group around it as well for eight weeks. So it'll start a week before the program. We'll do the program for that full day training. Then the work really begins in the Facebook group. You guys will be buddying up, holding each other accountable. We'll be doing a lot of group stuff in there as well. Um, just to make sure that you guys don't just, you know, learn this stuff on the day, but you go and implement it. It's called act on this. You've got to take the information, go and act on it. But I promise you it's going to make some huge, huge differences in your career. Uh, but the training, if you want to go and watch the replay of the free training, it's actonlist.tv forward slash replay. Um, and then if you want to go and actually get your ticket for this event, it's actonlist.tv forward slash first roll. But I'm probably going to take it all down within probably 24, 48 hours, something like that. Um, but I know loads of you guys have uh, jumped on board, so um, I cannot wait to uh, to work, work with you all. And Chris says, I didn't even start doing any actor training until I was 33. Graduated from an acting degree when I was 38. You're 38? How old are you, Chris? I thought you were like 20-something, mate. Chris is, Chris is like, looks young, man. He's a guy who's young at heart. I thought you were like 28 or something, mate. I had no idea, no idea how, uh, how old you were. Um, Joe says, I'm 48, started this fantastic journey three years ago. It's amazing when people come to the industry a little bit later because you've had all that life experience that you can put into your work. We are our own tools as actors. There's nothing else we have to work with, which is why actors get so hung up on it because I know if you were doing any other trade, you were a plumber, you wouldn't care about going to a supplier or writing an email going, hey, can I get some pipes cheap? Whereas you'll shit your pants if you're going, hey, can I have a job as, a, as, a, as an actor when you're writing to a casting director? It's the same thing. 
you're just looking to another supplier to get work or to get stuff for your career. Um, but when it's you that you're selling, and a lot of actors don't even know what it is they're selling, that's where the, the problems uh, come in. Um, and Bobby says, holy hell, Chris, I thought you were mid-30s as well. Chris has got like some sort of secret to youth, definitely, um, without, a, uh, without a doubt. Um, opposite of me says Steve I'm 24 and look 45 but Steve you wear it well man and congrats on the showreel so when we, on Saturday I was talking a lot about people's showreels being congruent to who they are and what, actually what they're offering because it makes a casting director's job so much easier um, as opposed to you know trying to be something that you either think they want or something that you're just blatantly not um, Steve your showreel mate honestly I commented on it yesterday the new showreel scene it's just a scene just, he's just shot a scene um, that absolutely Fits you like a glove, Steve, right? He basically, um, Steve plays a great scally. He'll be the first to admit it. It's perfect casting type. The lovable rogue. The guy's a little bit dodged, but you just can't help but like him. Um, and the scene that Chris Stone wrote for you is like so perfectly written. For, you know, And you know what? I would even class when we're talking about day player roles as well. I would class scally as a day player role. There's always... The, the the lovable rogues who are like well actually some of them aren't lovable at all but on you know on the serial dramas Corey Eastenders Emmerdale Hollyoaks etc you always get the one episode or the two episodes where there's like a gang Steve you did that on Coronation Street um but you know you'll get like the mugger it's always it's always just like one scene where Rita's getting mugged or something like that in Coronation Street you know you'll get the gang of scallies someone will go in and rob a shop or something like that it's definitely a recurring day player role that comes up time and time again and I know if you put that scene Steve in front of the people who cast those roles, mate. I mean, it's perfect. It's so well acted. You throw it away. It's not over the top. It's very natural, even though it's quite funny as well. Um, it's just great. So well done. Um, if you post it in the ads on this Facebook group, just watch it, people, and you'll see. You'll just see something that's perfectly written for the people that are in it. Steve's not trying to play a police officer that he would never be cast as um, because he thinks, oh, that's a day player role. It's not right for him. Uh, whereas, you know, I wouldn't play the role that he's played in that. It's not right for me. I would probably be the copper arresting you, Steve. And I hope, you know what, mate? I'd freaking love it if that happened one day. I would love it if we were in a show and I was taking him down. Uh, that'd be awesome, um, without a doubt. Connor says, feel your pain. I used 23, looking 30s. But that's good. Honestly, it's a USP, man. That's fine. And tell casting directors that. You know, most people try and, you know, be the whole, oh, I'm I'm 50, but I, I, I can play 35 when they can't just think they can. Um, admitting it the other way around and being aware of it, it's great because, again, you're more in alignment with your self-awareness, your casting type and what it is you're going to actually get paid to play, um, which is uh, which is cool. We've um, got a load of comments. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to miss quite a few of these out. I'm going to play some more clips from Nicola Bolton and Bryony Polizzi's um, uh, webinar that we did last week. Again, you can watch the full replay of this over at onthis.tv along with another, God, I don't know, 100 plus um, features that we've done uh, over the last few years and over lockdown particularly. We've hammered these where every week we've had an incredible guest on. Um, great actors, uh, big actors as well. We've had people like Matt Lucas on, David Harewood, Daniel Mays, who I thought was just absolutely fantastic. Um, incredible agents, writers, producers, um, you know, literally the who's who of the uh, of the British acting industry, without a doubt. And um, this is a little clip um, about for those people who've got agents about helping your agent. You know, get you opportunities working together, not just sitting there relying on your agent. A lot of people give their agents a little bit of bad press when I talk to them sometimes, and I think, well, what are you doing? Your agent's looking after. 60 maybe 80 other clients let's say on a good day half of them are in work so maybe they're looking at looking after 40 people what are you doing to make your agent's job like easier because again and you'll feel way more empowered that thing i said before with great responsibility comes great power not the other way around it well it works the other way around as well but if you are responsible for your career again you're way way more powerful within it but this is um this is this is nicola and brianie talking about how you ultimately can help your agent what can I do as an actor to try and find jobs rather than just leave it up to my agent? Because obviously you've only got a small amount of time that you can spend on each person that you've got on your books. I wouldn't look at it as, um, you know, your agent only has a certain amount of time to spend on you because, you know, if an agent's taking you on, you know, I'm, I mean, I don't know who the agent is or anything, but I'm speaking from how we would take someone on. We, we don't take people on lightly. Um, mm. And so they see something in you and, you know, they really believe. So I wouldn't look at it like that. 
but I think the the number one thing in progressing is having a really good relationship with your agent mm -hmm. so you know it is a case of not just sitting back and waiting for the phone to ring it's just checking in every now and then just popping an email across a little phone call but you know as we were saying earlier I think um, casting directors just working with your agent to see you know we, we ha like Nikki said, we have to be careful about giving out too much information, but what kind of things have I been subbed for in a general scope? And then you can touch base with those casting directors. But I think, you know, main, getting that relationship with the agent is a really important thing. I think you have to have a good relationship with your agent in, a, in order for it to work. Ask how your agent likes to work. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes they're very specific on when they like, want to be contacted, how they want to be contacted, you know, things like yeah. that. Just, I'm sure they'll have put all this in, you know, they'll probably tell you all this anyway. Yeah. But it's that, um, yeah, it's just, you know, what, what um, you know, every so often, what, you know, what can I double up on? What can I send off for? Is there anyone whose radar can I get on? It's And if for you, I think it's knowing, like we said before, it's knowing the, the landscape, who is casting mm. what at what time and who is assisting them, who are the teams. So it's, it, is, it is about you looking at the television and doing a spreadsheet, I think. You know, I know it's that, but like knowing who's doing what and who's, you know, what's happening. <laughs>Um, get your membership if you want to watch the full chat but it's super super interesting again it just hammers home like how much again responsibility you have for your career you need to know what's going on you know you needed to know hopefully you guys you know will will have, have seen you know what started filming again today if you're not you know sort of researching stuff like that following the right people on twitter you know you don't have your twitter list sorted out so when you can just flick onto a list and it's just casting directors etc if you don't know how to make twitter lists google it how do i make a twitter list just make a list of all the casting directors um in uk tv that you know are casting decent stuff if you don't know who they are and um, go to actonthis.tv forward slash twitter and i will send you a list just pop your details in and i'll send you a list of 33 casting directors that i think you should be following um but it is down to you to have your finger on the pulse know what's going on um, sometimes you know what so you can make your agent aware of it as well because they might miss something they might have missed today you know that doctors had gone back filming and for you it's like actually that's a show I really want to be on you know nudge them hey just notice this could you keep an eye out for briefs that are going out on spotlight now um, you know then you get back in touch with the casting directors you know who have probably because at the BBC it's in house I'm pretty sure they will have been furloughed um, for the last few months now they'll be back obviously as well now the show is starting again um, so maybe you need to do a little bit of research on who those people are there's nothing wrong with a little call to the BBC switchboard you know um, and uh, and go listen just wondered if you put me through to casting hey really sorry bother you two seconds could you let me know who the casting directors for, you know, the uh, for Doctors Holby and Casualty are right now? Won't take up any more of your time. Bosh. Done. And they'll give you that. They'll give you that information. Um, but it is about being response-able for your own career. Um, so that was a little uh, a little clip as well. I'm going to play another one in a sec, um, which was on what to do when you're not getting auditions. This is a question that comes up a lot when people are like, right, okay, what, what can I do when I'm not getting auditions? A huge part of the training at this URL here that you see, acts on this.tv forward slash replay, you know, that's going to give you some massive clues of what exactly you should be doing when the auditions aren't coming in. But I'm going to play you what Nicola and Bryony uh, said in a minute. I want to read your comment out there, Helen, as well, because Helen's put, um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I have a decent job, but feel down, uh, deep down, I want to risk everything to follow my passion. Um, and it is interesting, isn't it? What we, you, God, you, that's such a common scenario to be in. Uh, Helen without a doubt and not just in the acting industry like you know when you're doing a corporate job or you've been in the corporate world and maybe you feel you were born to be an entrepreneur you were born to act or sing or whatever it was um, I know a lot of people who uh, yeah you know you I, I've got so addicted to the security of the corporate world even though I don't even think it's that secure I don't there's a thing you know when I was getting a mortgage for this place my bank uh, manager was like yeah they just look at self-employed people as, as risky and actors particularly risky so I had to jump through so many hoops to buy this place and um, when really I sat down with them and you know practically explained listen I have so many revenue sources like all my voiceover work my presenting work my acting work 
if my acting work dries up, I've still always got my voiceover work. I can still work and I have worked regularly throughout COVID from a makeshift studio in my bedroom in the wardrobe, earning really decent money as a voiceover artist. In the corporate world, people might think they've got decent jobs and that that's it, they're in there for life. But right now, how many people are being made redundant? Boom, and when your one revenue stream goes, you're screwed. So I feel being freelance, being self-employed and having multiple revenue streams makes me actually way more secure um, as opposed to uh, you know insecure for banks to bet on. So I don't really understand it, but there's a lot of people who are sacrificing absolutely their happiness for a little bit of extra wealth. People I know have stayed in jobs that have been making them miserable for the extra eight grand a year so they can take business class flights when they go on holiday once a year. Is it really worth it being miserable for 50 weeks of the year so you can take some business class flights for two weeks? It's just a complete, it's so backwards. And I'm like, some people, you know what, you'd be so much happier, you know, earning 63 grand than 87 grand you know, doing something that you, uh, you know, really much, you know, enjoy much more than that high paid corporate job. Um, and people just stay in the high paid corporate job because like, no, this is it. I've, I've overextended myself. I bought shit I don't need. Um, and now I'm paying it off. So I can't afford to leave this job because I need the money. And it's not actually them who owns their own possessions. Their possessions own them. I know a guy who bought a beautiful car, um, but he's ended up paying back 800 pounds a month for it. He had to stay in this job he absolutely hated, couldn't get out of the lease for it. You know, he bought the car because he thought it'd make him look good. It obviously, you know, it just masks some pain that's somewhere in people's lives, isn't it? When they've got to have bling bling. And actually what he ended up realizing, a fantastic lesson for him, is he never owned the car. The car owned him the whole time. He was just working a job he hated to pay off the car that he only bought to mask some pain and insecurity because he wasn't happy in his life. Quit the job, get happy. You don't need the car. Um, so, uh, yeah, really interesting point, but it's great that you're aware of that, Liz, that you actually do want to risk it. Um, and hopefully you're in a position, if you've been in a good job and you've maybe saved, um, put a year's money to one side. What's, what's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen? Go for it. Honestly, absolutely. Uh, Helen, sorry, did I say Liz? Helen, um, definitely, uh, definitely go for it. And Steve says he did play a copper. I'd love to see that, Steve. You cast yourself as a copper, mate. There ain't no casting or casting you as a copper. Not unless it's like a corrupt one. <laughs> I mean it in the nicest possible way, mate. You know I do. But if I saw Steve as a copper, I'd be like, right, he's robbed he's he has robbed that uniform. Definitely. I mean it in a in a in a very loving way, Steve. I know you can take it. It's only a bit of a uh, a little bit of razz in him. Um, I researched the CDG, says Brendan, and sourced each casting director what they cast and target those that worked on projects that I loved or thought I would have been right for. I then did a spreadsheet and dated when I contacted them and when they replied. Brendan, it's music to my ears, man. It's exactly what I would recommend people do. You've got to systemize the way you're running your business. And if your business is just, you know, has no systems in place, no standing operating procedures as an actor, nothing where you're going, right, I schedule when I'm writing to people, I schedule what I'm putting out, I'm going to promote myself, I'm going to put every other Tuesday away to just focus on this or whatever it is. Um, you just don't get anywhere. You just don't get anywhere. Um, so, uh, yeah, you've got to... Um, you've got to put the work in. You've got to hustle and get a little bit geeky sometimes. Get your Excel spreadsheet out. Um, definitely. Amanda says, that's me. Eight years in corporate with acting on the side. Took the dive and went full-time creative last year. And it's a dream come true. Boom. Good for you. Well done. It's, it's brave, Amanda. Well done, though. That's like exactly what you uh, what you should have done. You know in your heart. Sometimes you've got to get out of your head, haven't you? Your heart already knows what you want. Just get out of your head. Stop justifying why you can't do it. Get more excited about actually doing it than the fear of it going wrong. Um, Amy says, what kind of things do people do on the side? of acting that they actually enjoy being struggling to find the balance and never want to lie to employers about needing the flexibility and stuff. Yeah, it's interesting, Amy. I mean, it's been, it's been a long time since I've, I've been in the day job, but I know what that was like. I was working for minimum wage in a computer game shop in the Trafford Centre for the first sort of, what would have been six years out of uni, out of drama school, um, and it was horrible. It was rubbish. I was always, I was scared when the phone would ring and I'd get an audition because like, oh God, now I've got to break it to the boss. That's not the situation you want to be in. You should be happy about getting auditions, not scared <laughs> of going, oh God, now I have to ask for time off. And it actually, I was forced out of the job. I'll tell you what happened to me. I got a voiceover at 10 o'clock in the morning and my agent, my voiceover agent always was like, you know, Ross, can you come in and do it this afternoon? I had a bit of a setup with my old manager that he just let me go and I'd make the hours up at the end of the day. A new boss came in. She was called Jen. She was horrible. Phil, he was top. Jen, bitch. Sorry, Jen. 
um, if you're watching, not that you will be, um, she hated me. She hated me. Um, I think it's because I was pursuing something that I loved and she was doing something she hated. Um, but I went to do this voiceover job and then I came back because she actually let me because I had a prearranged like arrangement with my previous boss. I said, look, Phil used to let me do this. She was like, okay, on this occasion, you can do it. And I get it. I probably pissed her off because I, when I got back, my agent actually phoned me literally as I'd taken my coat off. I said, Ross was so sorry. This was for some adverts for WeBuyAnyCar.com. Remember, it was WeBuyAnyCar.com. I think I was saying, like, you know, just, just the tagline at the end, like, you know, uh, I don't know, trade in your car today at WeBuyAnyCar.com or whatever it was. Um, and in the script, it said, save, you should trade your old car in and, like, you saved an extra 10%. And we said initially, the script came through, and it said 10% on all cars. And then when I got back to work, um, they'd rang and said, no, we've got the script wrong. It should be off selected cars. Can you come back and say selected cars? Um, and these adverts need to go out on the radio at half 12. I was like, oh God, okay, I'll come back. So I asked Jen and she um, she did not, Jen did not like that. She let me go though. I mean, so you know what, Jen, to be fair, maybe a bit harsh on you. You did let me go twice. You're probably not too bad. Um, and And then on the way back, oh my God, I literally was in the taxi on the way back because I can't drive because of my eyes. I had to get taxis everywhere. And on the way back from doing that, I got another call from my agent. And I honestly thought it was a wind up. I was like, Kath, ha ha ha, whatever. Yeah, brilliant. She was like, Ross, we need you to come back. I was like, oh, whatever. Yeah, of course you do. Thinking this is a joke. Wasn't a joke. They actually needed me to go back. So I went back. And then when I got back to work, Gemma's was like, ultimatum. Basically, you either do that, you know, and you don't work here or you work here and you can forget that. And I just walked completely out of character so went right jen thanks ever so much uh made my decision for me laters um, and then i sent a message to the area manager because i was well in with him he'd been in the in the, in the like i'd been part of this shop for years and he actually got me a job at the shop we had two stores in the traffic center he got me a job at the one upstairs so um i was then in competition of jen so worked extra hard to try and outsell her uh which was quite good but yeah it was almost the decision was made for me i worked there over christmas and then i'd left completely and never looked back um, and just when you go all in on something, and for me, it was like, I can't, uh, you know, this has to work. You just put the work in and it just, sometimes when, it's that whole thing in it, leaping the net will appear. I just leapt and I'd probably, it, looking back, I'd probably stayed in that minimum wage job for maybe four years too long. I felt I could have done it much before that, but I was just scared. If I was honest with you, I just was so fearful of what if I can't pay this, I need money for this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, sometimes when you do take the leap, you just make it work because you work extra hard. But in terms of jobs that are flexible, Amy, the only place that I know of for actors was places like RSVP, the call center. They employ actors on purpose. There's also a flower company that were at Surviving Actors last year. I can't remember. It's someone's name, like Henry's Flowers or something. It's not Henry, though. It's someone else. And basically, um, you get paid by the hour, and you sell uh, subscriptions to flowers on the street to people but they um they then pay you commission when you sell like a, a you know a subscription and they were specifically requesting actors there's quite a lot of companies like that you know because you're personable as an actor and you're confident and you'll talk to the public and stuff so companies like that are quite uh, useful sometimes you know they're worth exploring if people are looking for some extra money on the side but i'm sure people will shout up in the chats if you've got any suggestions on um on what amy can do and what other people what you guys are doing sandra says i clean apartments um good job to think about stuff yeah definitely you know cleaning cleaning work Plenty of time to think and go over your lines and that sort of stuff. Joe teaches horse riding and trains horses. Nice. Joe, I've never ridden a horse. Can I have some lessons one day? I'd love to. I, I can't put on my CV. I'm a horse rider for Downton Abbey or something. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to be in any uh, The Witcher riding a horse because I can't do it. So uh, I'd like some horse uh, riding lessons, please. Um, Lena says she's done all sorts of things, supplement her income. Most of them means to an end, but they're luckily they're flexible. It's what you've got to do sometimes. It is just a means to an end. This is These are not forever jobs. Sometimes you've just got to take stuff. Rihanna says ARC promotional work. That must be a company, ARC, A-R-C. Freddy's Flowers, Lena, that's it, not Henry's Flowers. Yeah, you're right, Freddy's Flowers. Is that still a thing? Is Freddy successful? Because he was, he was looking for people at Surviving Actors last year. He seemed like a nice guy as well. Um, yeah, Freddy's Flowers. Could be a uh, could be worth a, a shot if if they're allowed to do it on the street at the moment with COVID. I'm sure they can because it's outside. Um, one of my friends has copyright in freelance. Says Polly, there's loads of stuff and you can work from home online. You know if you've uh, we were talking to uh, an actor an actress who was who's a member on one of the Friday calls we do for members. I do like a Q and A 
Anything Goes call every other Friday. And I can't remember the name of the actress, but she works as a um, executive assistant, but online virtually, a virtual assistant. Lots of companies, if you if you are kind of like quite organized and you can use email, maybe you're specialized in a certain piece of software, you can find loads of jobs where you know you can work remotely from home on your laptop, get paid being a virtual assistant part time for companies or a, you know a, a particular person. Um, that's always you know worth exploring as well. Nikki runs some beauty therapy, uh, runs her own mobile business, um, and Lena says very successful for Freddie's flowers, gorgeous flowers. There you go, Freddie. I'll give you a little shout out. Um, I don't need any flowers though. It's all right. I'd only kill them. I always, I can't like after flowers. I've got a cactus. I killed two of them by accident because I overwatered them. One is going strong and I water it every Sunday. Um, Callum, sorry I'm late. He says, in the process of applying for some full-time jobs, need to save some money to invest in a new showreel and headshots. Going to remarket my showreel with day player roles. It's the way forward, Callum. I'm telling you, mate. Again, that training, we talk all about it. That's on this.tv forward slash replay. If you want to see that training, I'm probably going to take it down tomorrow. Um, and Joe says, yeah, I've mentioned it before. I'll teach you to ride and get you, get it, uh, and if you can get me on Emmerdale. Joe, easy. Get you on Emmerdale like that. We just got, we just got to put what you are, you know, and, you know, you're, you, basically what you're going to get employed for, we just need to put that in front of the people who are ready to buy it. And we know who those people are um, without a doubt. And it's literally just showing them what it is that you can do for them to solve their problems. It's honestly it's so, so easy. It's really, really simple. I'm not saying it happens like literally straight away, but the process is like, basically, if you're good, you gotta be good. I mean, that's the thing, you know, I can't have any, I've got no input on people's talent and how well trained you are, how long you've been doing it. But if you're good, like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen like within, you know, a couple of months, two, three months of just putting the right stuff in front of the right people at the right time, you know. And the only the only thing that's kind of thrown a spanner in the works recently has been the fact that filming has been stood down on a lot of these shows that I would recommend people, you know, target. But now filming is starting again. Um, and there are these day player roles still going out. Not as many, admittedly, but it's going to increase and increase and increase as we get, you know, further through the year. Um, and I'm really optimistic with how we're going to handle this pandemic. Um, I don't think it can possibly, when people are talking about second waves and, oh, it could be terrible and worse than the first, how? I don't buy it. When we're all so aware, none of us are mixing, we're all wearing masks, the majority being sensible. How on earth, you know, we're protecting care homes, we're, we're well geared up on hospital, we've got PPE. I feel like it's scaremongering. How on earth can it be worse than what it was? It was pretty horrific. Um, but we know so much more now. I don't think it can be. I'm I'm very positive that we're going to be, uh, you know, not going to be back to normal for a while, but I'm confident that, you know, stuff will, will get better and better. Um, definitely. And Brendan said he left his high-paying exec nurse manager post three years ago, started his own business as a, as a locum nurse, restarted his drama training at various workshops, joined Acts On This a year ago, looked my USP up and decided to change my brand. And now I am selling a very exclusive model of the Bremster. <laughs> the Bren if anyone wants to employ the Bremster, uh, we we've got him here, particularly if you need a nurse. Um, he is your man. He says, if I can do it on my own, and we know the support anyone can. Exactly, mate. It's because you just believed you could, thus you did it. That's literally, it's so much of it. It's so much of it, you know, so much of it. 80% of it is whether you believe you can or you can't. 20% of it is just putting the work in. Simple as that. Um, I'm going to play you guys. We've only got a few minutes left. What's happening this Thursday? If you are not a member of ActsOnThis.tv, you are missing out every single week. We do a closed-door mastermind session with a top casting director, agent, actor, writer, producer. This Thursday evening, I've literally just... I've got the same T-shirt on because I've just filmed it. I'm going to play a trailer now. I just had a little Zoom chat with Ruth Maidley, uh, BAFTA-nominated Ruth Maidley. Uh, I worked with her in a show called Don't Take My Baby back in 2014. Ruth got nominated for Best Actress at the BAFTAs opposite Saran Jones, Claire Foy. And I can't remember who else she was up against. Um... I think Saran Jones won it, unfortunately. Ruth, Ruth was robbed that year, but um, has gone on to do incredible stuff, uh, restarting uh, Russell C. Davis's Years and Years. Um, she's just finished filming in South Africa for, well, before lockdown, for um, a brand new BBC America fantasy series called The Watch. I think it's based on Terry Pratchett's work. Um, plays an awesome character in that. Um, can't wait for you to see her in that. She showed me some stuff before. 
um, but it looks absolutely amazing. And Ruth is going to be joining us this Thursday evening um, at 7.30 p.m. for all premium members. And we're going to be talking about her very unlike uh common entry into the industry like very not trained not trained at all all you guys who are hung up on being you know drama school trained and you're never going to get anywhere without it she's baffed the nominated never trained never trained we're gonna be talking about um how she got the role for don't tell my baby how that then impacted the rest of her career getting baffed the nominated moving agents from a solid manchester agent but to a top top london agent and what that actually does for your career the reality of it we're going to talk dead openly about it what you know like progression that suddenly you know enables you to have very very quickly um working out in the states getting management in the states um ultimately i hope it's going to be super super positive we're going to be talking about disability inclusion not just disability but just diversity in general ruth has spina bifida and um, she's a wheelchair user um but she's just a proper go-getter proper northern gal um she's just awesome this is the trailer that we literally filmed i finished it two minutes before i went live tonight hopefully um, hopefully it's going to work but this is Thursday night 7.30pm Actors, you know what time it is I am back once again with another incredible invite for you guys to another incredible actonlist.tv live webinar this time taking place on Thursday August the 13th at 7.30pm with this amazing woman here she's just been named Breakout Star of the Year by the Times of London is already a BAFTA nominated actress and she will be starring in BBC America's upcoming fantasy series The Watch it's only Ruth Madeley isn't it? Woo! Hi! Ruth, what on earth are we going to be talking about on Thursday? You know what, on Thursday we are going to be super, super positive, as yes. you always are, about everything to do with diversity, disability inclusion, all of those things that gets a really, really bad rep at the minute, which, which we know there are lots of things that aren't great, but on Thursday we're going to be talking about all things positive and how the industry is changing for the better and we're not taking ourselves too seriously. That's what we're doing on Thursday. Absolutely. And we're going to be talking, I want to just talk again and recap on your like entry into the industry that was just, you know, basically not at all the, the you know, the normal route. It's not what a lot of people think. It was a complete accident. There is no one way into this industry, guys and girls. I'm going to be talking about that too. Nice. So we're going to be making basically positivity and optimism a lot louder. If you want to get involved with this chat, literally jump on camera, have a little one-to-one -one with Ruth. Any questions that you have on your acting career, anything that's going to help you get further, faster auditions, casting, um, just absolutely anything at all, get yourself over to actonthis.tv forward slash live right now for full details of how you can get involved with this webinar and all upcoming webinars as well. Ruth, I'm going to pass it back over to you. Why don't actors want to miss it? Because you and I, when we get together, it's pure carnage, total fun, and um, it's all going to be recorded. So let's just put that out in the world. Nice. If you want to get involved with some carnage, that's on this.tv forward slash live. Boom, act on this, .tv forward slash live. Do you know what? I think on that page at the moment, you might even be able to get your first month's membership half price. I wonder if Ollie's still kept that up. Act on this, .tv forward slash. If he has, I don't think he should have done, but if he has, I'm going to, I'll just keep it up. It's fine. Uh, let me share my screen with you. I'll show you. It's going to go, the screen's going to go black for a sec. Just bear with me. Oh no, that's, that's my desktop. So... <laughs> Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, here you go. Acts on this TV forward slash live. Um, click that big green button. You'll get a month's access for twelve quid. It's an absolute no brainer. Uh, that means you're going to get four calls with four incredible people. You're going to get two rapid fire Friday Q and As and a Saturday social. Um, go get it. Acts on this TV forward slash live. Cannot say um, say fairer than that. Yeah, I'll probably keep that up for this week, but that's that should not. To be honest with you, that offer shouldn't be there. That's because I got so wrapped up in the training on Saturday that I forgot to take that down. Um, but don't forget as well, yeah, if you want to get involved with the replay of Saturday's training before that comes down, it's at on this.tv forward slash replay as well. And if you want to get your ticket for the full day event um, and what will be a couple of months of um, 
kind of like a little group mastermind on Facebook. It's going to be a lot of like, you know, community driven stuff. You guys are going to be kind of in charge of a lot of that. I will be in there able to ask questions, you know, answer questions for you. I'll be going live in there. Um, but it's really about keeping each other accountable, making sure that people are keeping each other motivated, inspired. Um, literally, and, you know, people talk about like inspiration, like, oh, you know, or, you know, like it's bullshit, but like, Super powerful when you're seeing other people do what it is that you want and you know you've got the tools to do it and you are in spirit. You know, that's what inspired means. Um, like, you know, you're connected to a higher purpose. It's something that you actually want. You know, like there's nothing more sort of invigorating and motivating than actually being part of a group who are all try to you know achieve the same thing. Um, so uh, it's going to be super exciting. And also if you get your ticket as well, loads of great bonuses you get the um something that we've not put out and i don't know if i'll be putting it out in any other format but patch like i say has been working on these these spreadsheets the most in-depth databases basically of casting directors casting associates agents in the country um contact details imdb pages social details which agents belong to which agencies even the big ones each individual email address um you know literally everything the casting associates who they work for um just loads and loads of great stuff that's uh, one of the bonuses we've got another bonus where you're going to get 17 hours of podcasts from ads on this tv and the uh, facebook group obviously is a you know an eight week bonus as well uh, that's ads on this tv forward slash first roll um and that kind of brings us to uh, to the end of tonight hope people have found it uh, found it useful anyone got anything else to say for the last couple of minutes before we wrap it up where there's carnage, there's always a nurse, says Brendan. Yeah, Ruth. when we and Ruth get together, it is generally carnage because obviously, you know, I'm the blind guy. You know, sometimes when we're in London pushing the girl in the wheelchair, like I'm dangerous with that. You know, Ruth will be like, oh, is a hill. Can you push me up this? You know, Ruth, like, you, you know, um, does her own wheelchair. Um, you know, with her arms when she's uh, when she's out and about. But sometimes it's like, this is a really steep hill. Give us a push, will you? Um, and I'll just like push her into shit because <laughs> I can't see very well. <laughs> so we're running through London. We had to do a talk together. What? Do you know what? We had a really posh talk one morning at the Ivy in London. We were talking about inclusivity. We were talking about Don't Take My Baby, that show we both did together. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, because it's like the, the Ivy is such a grand place, but it's all dark like mahogany wood. My eyes, that's not great when it's a dark floor with dark tables, dark this. It's just like someone just turned the lights on. This is uh, it's really interesting. We're talking all about disability and I basically can't see where I'm going. Um, but yeah, Ruth is, a, is hilarious. We're going to have an absolute riot. You're going to jump on camera, chat to Ruth one to one. Anyone's got any questions? She's an open book as well. Like, you know, anything um, that you just want to know about. Ultimately, I think it's going to be a lot to do with turning adversity or what it seems as adversity into your own advantage and whether you've got a disability or not or you're marginalized or you have something that you're living with that is like you know you wish could be like you know made easier or um you know sometimes gets you down like it's just going to help you realize that you're just not on your own everyone's got their thing and if you look at it in a different way and reframe it you can sometimes i say like 99 percent of cases use that thing that you're looking at as a negative as cliche as cliched as it sounds as a real positive particularly in this industry to sell yourself um, you know, to make people curious um, and to tell a story that's very often not been told before. Because that's the thing, you know, we're telling the same stories over and over again. People are on the lookout, exec producers, writers, producers, directors, looking out for like new stories. So unless you're talking about whatever it is that is your thing, um, you can't really expect anyone else to write about it because they might not know about it. So you've got to start talking and telling people uh, your stories and you might inspire someone to go, right, I'm going to either write it with you or, you know, take the bull by the horns and write it yourself. Um, so many people are, uh, are doing that. Um, thank you, Helen. It says, brilliant tonight. Uh, really, what do you say, Helen? Really benefited from the motivational stuff for the over 50s. I've got a piece, Helen, a piece of, uh, of, of micro content for, and I've even labeled it for every actor over 50. And it is that little clip of Wendy and Martin Gibbons. Um, if you tweet at Act On This TV now, and just put, um, at ads on this TV, send me the clip. Um, when I get off this broadcast, I'll reply with that clip for you, just so you can see, you know, it's not that I'm not making this up. This is, this is from a very established, probably the most established commercial casting director in the country, crying out for older actors. Um, so that, you know, I'm not just, it's not just motivational or inspirational bullshit that I'm saying. Like, this is, everything I say is based on fact 
and the reality of spending 400 hours over the last decade talking to the people in this industry who run it you know, four acts on this dot TV. That's what it's uh, what it's about. Um, awesome. Um, well, listen. Thanks so much for being here. Hugely appreciate you all. Um, Going to be live with Ruth on Thursday evening, seven thirty p.m. Uh, p.m. Spread the word. It would mean the world if when I put this trailer out on Twitter in a bit. Um, probably to, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, if you all retweeted it, just told people to come and get involved. Um, hopefully this is all making a you know big difference in your life and your career, um, keeping you all on uh, on track. Um, but the more you can, um, yeah, sort of just tell other actors about it, it just really, really, it just helps me. I get so busy, it's like, pff, try to do all the features, do all the trainings, and then tell people about it and get more people in the community. It's freaking hard work. So <laughs> if you could do anything for me, people always reach out and say, let me know what you can do. I'm like, I don't want anything from you. Bar, just tell one friend. Just tell one friend uh, who's an actor to come and get involved. And if you all do that, oh, happy days. If you could bring one person into the community each, um, we'd all be having a lovely time. So uh, I will play Ruth's trailer one more time. Um, and I'll see you all, yeah, Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. at on this.tv forward slash live if you want to get your membership at 50% off to join this call and the next four calls, well, three calls after that. Um, or if you want to go and watch this training for free that I promise you is going to really, really help you get your first t- uh, first role on TV. It's at on this.tv just down here forward slash replay uh, for those people in the audio experience yeah that's on this.tv forward slash replay uh, right is ruth and i'll uh, i'll see you thursday until then lots of love bye for now actors you know what time it is i am back once again with another incredible invite for you guys to another incredible act on this.tv live webinar this time taking place on thursday august the 13th at 7 30 p.m with this amazing woman here she's just been named breakout star of the year by the times of london is already a bafta nominated actress and she will be starring in bbc america's upcoming fantasy series the watch it's only ruth madeley in it Woo! Hi! Ruth, what on earth are we going to be talking about on Thursday? You know what? On Thursday, we are going to be super, super positive, as you always are, about everything to do with diversity, disability, inclusion, all of those things that gets a really, really bad rep at the minute, which which we know there are lots of things that aren't great, but on Thursday, we're going to be talking about all things positive and how the industry is changing for the better and we're not taking ourselves too seriously. That's what we're doing on Thursday. Absolutely. And we're going to be talking, I want to just talk again and recap on your like entry into the industry that was just, you know, basically not at all the, the you know, the normal route. It's not what a lot of people think. It was a complete accident. There is no one way into this industry, guys and girls. I'm going to be talking about that too. Nice. So we're going to be making basically positivity and optimism a lot louder. If you want to get involved with this chat, literally jump on camera, have a little one-to-one with Ruth. Any questions that you have on your acting career, anything that's going to help you get further, faster, auditions, casting, um, just absolutely anything at all, get yourself over to actonthis.tv forward slash live right now for full details of how you can get involved with this webinar and all upcoming webinars as well. Ruth, I'm going to pass it back over to you. Why don't actors want to miss it? Because you and I, when we get together, it's pure carnage, total fun, and um, it's all going to be recorded. So let's just put that out in the world. Nice. If you want to get involved with some carnage, that's on this.tv forward slash live. Oh, hang on. That's me. That's me again. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a, a little bit of a extra extra time for those people who have stayed behind. Um, I'm definitely going now. Bye for now.